Hey folks, David Stewart here. Hope you guys are having a great day. Let's talk a little bit about H.P. Lovecraft. The Shadow over Innsmouth. I always thought it was Innsmouth, but somebody corrected me. It's Innsmouth like Plymouth. Um, this is a really interesting story by H.P. Lovecraft. I believe it's his only one that was published like as a standalone book. Everything else was part of a magazine, but it is one of uh, his uh, books or novellas that is in the format of like this new book, which you can get for free actually by joining my mailing list down below in the 20 to 40,000 word range. Um, makes for a good about two hour read, which a lot of his long quote longer stories were in that category. And I think it's a really good length for a story. And this is a good example of how that length works really well to tell its complete story. It's a kind of mystery. So it's a mystery plot format and it uses a couple of his literary techniques to draw the reader a little further into the mystery and present them with more of the horror ideas uh, that make up the feel of an H.P. Lovecraft story. Um, H.P. Lovecraft's approach to horror, and horror as we know it, back then it would probably just all be weird fiction or something, um, is much more about creating an unsettling feeling rather than a sense of constant danger or tension like you would get in a lot of modern horror. Now, there is danger and tension in this, but it really only happens in the climax. Everything else is more about the uneasiness and the uncanniness of the environment and the discoveries that the narrator or the protagonist is making as he starts to uncover the mystery. So uh, you have a protagonist, he's on a trip through New England. He ends up deciding to go stop by this weird town called Innsmouth because he has some possible family relations to it. Um, and so when he goes there, he finds it's a really strange town. It's a town where nobody really goes there for any reason. There's like a, a grocery store clerk who's not from there. And he's like, you should get out by nightfall or like, it's really weird. Um, and he like buys some crackers and stuff for lunch and uh, decides to explore the town out of his own curiosity. Uh, this is something that you get in a lot of H.P. Lovecraft stories is that the protagonist is curious about things, even though we know that things are a little bit weird and he the protagonist finds that things are a little bit weird. Nevertheless, his curiosity drives him to further explore and try to uncover a mystery that is probably best left alone. He goes and explores around this town. He finds this old drunk man who uh, tells him these very fantastical stories. And so from the fantastical stories, at first they would be very unbelievable. You have this character named Marsh who uh, went traveling the world and brought back this cult, this uh, fish people cult. So this is one of the uh, the books that deals with, you know, your boy H.P. Lovecraft and the fish people um, and persuades the town to interbreed with these fish people, these deep ones, and produce offspring that look human, but then grow steadily more fishy. And one of the things you get uh, other characters talk about in the book is the Innsmouth look, which is like these bulging eyes and this kind of droopy, weird face and this pallid uh, complexion. So you start to look more fishy as you get older until you be transform into one of these fish people and you go and live in the ocean. What an interesting, uh, what an interesting setup. So they have this cult of Dagon, or it's, I think it's called the Esoteric Order of Dagon. And everyone in the in the town ends up having to join this cult because um, at some point they try to arrest Marsh for his bizarre fish breeding <laughs> experiments. And uh, the fish people come out of the water and kill a bunch of the townspeople. And the only people left are the ones who are gonna you know gonna join. Uh, going to join the cult and the fish people give them like gold and stuff in exchange for whatever participation they have with the fish people. Uh, so we have a, a really good example of uh, the mystery plot sort of unfolding the horror elements. And you also have a great example of what I call the descent into madness, which H.P. Lovecraft uses really uh, frequently. Now, in some cases, the descent into madness is a literal descent, literal descent, like you're going deeper into the basements of the of the buildings. In this case, it's going downhill towards the sea. So as the character moves downhill towards the sea, things get weirder and crazier uh, till you get closer to those factories. There's like a fish smell throughout the out the place then you have to try to depart that and of course his ability to leave ends up being 
uh, ends up being interrupted. He the the bus breaks down, and so he has to stay the night. And as he stays the night, things continue to get more insane. So things which seemed really ridiculous and were presented in a way to seem ridiculous to the narrator, like the fact that you're talking to a drunkard, the drunkard is saying lots of really crazy things. Um, people just in an offhand way talk about the craziness of uh, Innsmouth, this bizarre town and the weird people that live in it. Um, you suspect that there's something weird there. As a reader, you know that it's probably true because you're reading a horror story. And so being comfortably at home reading your book, you know that there's probably some truth to the weirdness. But if you just imagine it from the narrator's perspective, of course, he's not really going to believe these things. But each step takes him a little bit further away from the reality that he's normal, uh, normally comfortable with and into the reality of the fish people. Um, and so the climax really occurs where the bus breaks down. He has to stay in the hotel room. And as he stays in the hotel room, what's happening? The fish people are angry because he found out about them and they try to break into his hotel room. So he goes through a couple of, of different machinations to try to put them off. He, uh, he goes into the next room, he blocks a door, he eventually escapes out a window. He has to like pretend to be a fish person in the dark a couple times to get away from them. He runs out of town and uh, he doesn't want to look at them. So this is the uh, not just the climax in terms of the action, right? We have a, a finally a real threat to his life, which is the fish people. We haven't seen them, but we know they're there. We hear the sloshing noises on the floor and their weird fish speech. And he knows he's not supposed to look at them because what happens if you look at the horror is you're finally stepping over that line into the full insanity mode where uh, reality no longer matches any of your expectations and you have a crisis a psychological or spiritual crisis about it so he does he looks at the people he sees the horror of the fish people he loses consciousness that's his reaction now he wakes up the next day um, the night has passed the fish people have passed him by and he's able to escape from Innsmouth at that point um, now normally this would be the end of the story and one of the reasons that I think this story is so interesting is that that's not the end of the story. Rather than that being the end of the story, the protagonist ends up going and talking about things that happen afterwards. Like he alerts the authorities. Of course, of course you know, nothing's really going to happen from that. Um, you know, the weird jewelry that comes out of Innsmouth is just a curiosity for people outside the town because they are in the same realm. They're not going to be able to view things past that veil of insanity with any kind of seriousness, just like how if you're talking to the local drunkard, you're not going to view what he says as something that you really ought to consider to be true and real. Uh, but more than that, he because it's written in first person like somebody writing a journal, he discovers that he is indeed a descendant of the fish people. So he's a descendant of Marsh through... Uh, a, a mate with one of these fish people. He has a cousin who's already like in an um, in an insane asylum, I think. I think it's his cousin. And that person is already like basically going full fish mode. And so his he had an uncle who commits suicide too. I forgot about that. Yeah. Uh, because the uncle, of course, realizes that he's going to become a fish monster. And so rather than becoming one of the fish people and embracing the horror of that, he kills himself. And the narrator plans to kill himself, but he doesn't go through with it. Instead, he embraces his fishdom and realizes that he's, as he's turning into one of the fish people, he's going to go live in the ocean and meet his grandma, the, the queen of the fish people or something, and his mother maybe. Um, so he's uh, he embraces his fate rather than fighting it, uh, rather than denying the reality of it, rather than killing himself because he can't deal with the reality of it. He crosses fully over that veil of insanity and just embraces that he's a fish person and decides to go live in the ocean. And I think that's such a cool ending for one of his stories. Uh, most of the stories end on a, on a resolution where the characters are able to escape the immediate danger at least and move on. But Shadow over Innsmouth has that moment and then and then upends that mo that moment by giving you a revelation to the mystery. So all the time he's trying to uncover mysteries about his relations and in Innsmouth. So the final resolution of the story is he discovers the truth that he is descendant of the fish people. Now you have to decide what to do with that resolution of the mystery story. And he decides to embrace his fate as a fish person. Um, 
and go off and live in the ocean. I just think that was really a really fun and fascinating ending. Very few uh, stories either by Lovecraft or others would embrace that sort of ending. Um, so those are the big ones that are that are used. It's a mystery uh, mystery plot format that even involves like a chase, just like you would have in a detective novel at the end, but the chase is away from fish people and not towards a bad guy that you're trying to catch. Uh, you have a resolution, which is the uncovering of the mystery, and you have a strong descent into madness. The uncovering of the mystery involves stepping across the veil of madness and fully embracing the distorted and bizarre reality that you've been presented with and he does that by deciding to become a fish person rather than denying it and um ending up in the insane asylum or, or killing himself so anyway that's shadow over insmith it's a really cool story um i'm gonna plug my book again demon x machina it's one of these uh novellas that is about the same length as a lot of lovecraft stuff this one is stylistically very influenced by lovecraft not so much uh, the mythos. Most of the people, when they say Lovecraftian, they mean like Cthulhu and they mean like the Deep Ones and the Great Old Ones and the Shuggoths and all that kind of fun stuff. They have the tropic, they, they take the elements out of uh, an H.P. Lovecraft book and they use them as tropes in their book. That's not what I did at all. Rather, this is about what if the AI art had a demon in it because people have thought it was demonic. I'm like, let's just write a story about that. Demon ex machina. Um, but the approach to writing the story is reminiscent of Lovecraft. So it, it takes the other thing. It's a stylistic use of Lovecraft's techniques and his first person writing style rather than the use of, you know, Shuggoths and old gods and that sort of stuff, which is what most people mean by Lovecraftian. They take the Lovecraft stuff and they put it in a completely different literary style. Now, this is a mystery. Uh, it's a horror book, but it's also a mystery. We have to figure out if there's a, a demon in the AI. And uh, it's in the first person, which allows me to control a lot of things for the reader and control the pace of the story and the flow of information to finally give you the resolution of the mystery. So anyway, leave me your thoughts down below about Shadow Over Innsmouth or Innsmouth, whichever one you want to say it is. But uh, I've been corrected, I guess, to say Innsmouth. So we're going to go with that one. Uh, leave me your thoughts down below and let me know what you think. And I'll see you guys next time. Have a great one.